Right, so um, before you enter Inventor Studio, you want to make sure that you've put the various materials on all the parts of your model. So I've just um, added some um, materials to the glass here, the back, and the. I've actually changed the wall to a, a different surface just for um, the purposes of making it, it easier to see shadows. Okay, so um, that's why I've done that. So once you've done that uh, and you're ready, you're going to go into Inventor Studio, so Environments and Inventor Studio. Now in Inventor Studio, what you're going to do is you are going to do uh, two things, or well, three things. You're going to change the type of view, so we're going to look at Perspective View. You are going to set up some cameras, so you're going to choose particular views of your layout, um, and then you're also going to look at the different lighting uh, style so that you get some nice shadows on your object as well. So first thing, the views, get the view panel, make sure here that you've got it set to perspective. Normally we have it in orthographic which is great for being able to see um, um, surfaces and be able to modify the models and whatnot but for, for a realist, more realistic view we need perspective. So make sure that's selected there. Um, so that's that one. The next thing we need to look at is cameras. So um, what you want to do is use the um, F4 button on your keyboard. If you hold that down, you can use the this or the orbit tool. You can spin around and get views. What I tend to do is I tend to maybe start off with a straight view, hold down F4, and then use these these handles just to spin it a little bit, maybe tilt it a fraction until you've got a view that you're kind of happy with. Um, try and make sure that vertical lines are vertical. So if you hover on that little circle bit there, you can get um, you can get it to kind of appear more more kind of straight. So um, just move it around until you're happy with what, what the view is. Um, and then, happy with that, I've centered it in my window. What you're going to do is you're going to right click over here on where it says cameras. Uh, <coughs> if you right click, and you're going to create camera from view. And what that does is it literally creates a camera that is set to this view. So, what that means is if we were to go somewhere else and we were going to change the view, um, and look some, some look at some other sort of views. Um, if we wanted to get back to that view that we had that we'd spent a bit of time organising, what you can do is you can right click on camera one and you can say set view to camera. Don't set camera to view because that will change camera one to being the view that we've got just now. Set view to the camera and it goes back to that one that we had. So now we can repeatedly go back to it. You can do that um, uh, more often you can create as many cameras as you wish, so you want to get one a bit more zoomed in. Um, let's just go for that one. Right click, create camera from view. So now you've got two cameras here, and we can use them when it comes to the render. Now, although we set the uh, set the uh, the view to that camera, um, we don't necessarily, the camera doesn't necessarily show us the whole of our view window. So if I just go to that camera one, if I double click on it, what I've got is I've got my projection, so we've set it to perspective, you always want to make sure it's perspective. Um, we've got an angle, that's how much off horizontal it is, so that's pretty good, we'll leave it where it is. We've got a zoom, now this is quite important because you may find when you when you do this that to begin with you haven't got your whole object showing. So that black area is the extent of the, the camera's view. So when we render it with camera one in this instance, we would only get rendered whatever is inside that black box. So we need to zoom it a little bit until you're happy that you've got what you need. Okay, so once you're happy, you can you click OK. We'll just, just have a look at number two as well. Set view to camera. And if I double click on that, you can see here that the, 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 the view is not right. We need to come out a little bit until we've got it completely uh, included. We can OK that. So that's my two cameras. I've got two cameras set up. Um, what I need to do now is I need to look at some some lighting styles. So there's different lights that are like styles that are set up. Um, if you look here in the global lighting styles, we've got a whole load of of um, styles that have been pre-set for us. And each of those tends to have um, this is the old warehouse uh, image-based lighting. So we're looking at um, a setup where the Inventor Studio is going to look at the model, the surfaces we've said each of the models made of, and it's going to put it into this, it's called an environment, um, and it's going to work out how that environment would reflect off our object. Um, so in terms of the kind of uh, shadows that are falling on it and all that kind of that kind of stuff. You can actually, if you want to, if I just click that display scene image and I zoom out now, you'll see that object inside this um, <coughs> old warehouse or if we went to the, 
to the Desert Dawn Road. I'm just going to change it. You'll see. Um, I can't do it on that one. Uh, empty Lab. That's one I can do it on. Active. And then if I display that, you'll see that I'm actually now inside a lab. Okay. Interesting scale we've got going on there. So, um, <coughs> done that. Just going to cancel that a minute. Uh, uh, let's go back. So if we go back to the one I had to begin with, which was the old warehouse, that one there. Um, if you double click on it, or if you right click and go active, that's now the one that we're actually using. Now what happens is it puts it into our local lighting styles, and we can there actually change things, we can edit stuff. So we could maybe make the density of the shadows, um, or increase the ambient shadows a bit more, depending on what we were looking for. We'll save that. Um, so if I come back now, I've so I've got a, a lighting style that I've, I've I've tried and um, we can pick various ones and see what they look like as well without editing them. So we've got our cameras, we've done a bit of lighting, what we do now is we'll, we'll just try a render and see what it looks like. So we come up to render image here, now we're just doing a very quick one just to get an idea of whether the shadows are falling in the right place, whether the uh, materials look vaguely like we want them to and so on. So we don't need a big one, so we can just select one of these sort of first two, that won't take long for the computer to render them. Um, here we want to select the camera that we're going for, so I'll go for, let's go for camera 1 just for now. And the lighting style, we'll use the one that we just looked at, which was that old warehouse. Um, output here, we're not going to save it because we're just testing it. Render, what you could maybe do here is just put that down to draft. Um, <coughs> and it's just going to do 38, 32 iterations, it's going to go through it 32 times to, to um, kind of calculate what's going on. So if we just hit that now, little box coming up, and we can see here that we have got a bit of uh, some highlights. Um, we've not really got much in the way of reflection. We've got a little bit of shadow falling off, and in fact, the shadow look is falling off my image. So I need to move my um, my camera a little bit so that I get that shadow included in it. Um, these funny lines are just because I've got a, a, a glass surface against a solid surface. It doesn't really like it. So what I might need to do actually here is modify my model a bit and have a tiny space between the glass and the and the background and that would allow me to um, to get rid of those those lines. I can see that I need a little bit of changing so I'm just going to stop that and I'm going to have a look at my close it down, I'm going to go back to my camera one and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit you can actually grab that as well because what we can do once we've got an image is we can obviously import the image into um, another piece of software and crop it so it doesn't matter if it's a bit too big so that's that's fine. Um, let's have a look at a different lighting style this time. So I'm going to have a look at the um, courtyard shadows. Yeah, maybe I'll have some more shadows, make them a bit denser. I'll save that. And when I go now to render, again I'm going to choose camera one. Let's have a look and see what the Stuttgart Gart courtyard looks like this time. Output's the same. Render again. I'm just going for a draft. Let's see what happens. So here we go, we can see, maybe I prefer that a little bit, the light's a bit softer. Still got some reflection. So you can see what you need to do is just keep fiddling with your views, with the lights, um, uh, until you're happy and uh, happy with, with what you can see. Once you've done that and you're satisfied, you're going to need to go back and do a, a proper render. So at that point, we need to increase the aspect ratio so the actual image we're getting is bigger up to somewhere one of these one of these top two perhaps uh, output you can choose to save it or you can just let it run and then when you're happy you can click the button to save it um, and then here we're going to go down to high now if you leave this on iteration here it's just going to do it a couple of times and stop you could set a time what I tend to do is just do that one leave it until satisfactory and ideally let it running maybe overnight so just let it go and it will keep going and keep going and keep going and it will get finer and finer and finer each time and then when you come back and you look at it you can just press yep that's fine um, I'm happy to save it. So if I was to render that now it's going to take a long time to actually get the whole thing done. When I'm when I'm happy if I come back in a few hours and it's all nice and smooth and I'm happy with it I can stop it and then I can save it and I can even continue as well if I wanted to keep going. So hopefully that should allow you to um, set up some environments to start playing around. Remember the most important thing really is to get your active view on and then set your cameras. Once you've got a nice view and a couple of cameras 
um, then you can very quickly go back to those views and try renders. If you don't have the cameras in place then it's difficult to then go back and try and find the view. Another thing to think about with the views is what you're trying to do is, is recreate reality. So try and make sure that the view that you're giving is one that you see in real life. So if it's a view of a room you don't want your camera view to be bird's eye because you would never see it like that. You want it to be more kind of eye height. If it's something small like this you want to be zooming in you know, over a corner or maybe looking at it straight on again from an eye height. So just think about how you're putting your views together um, and then once you've got the cameras then you're on to thinking about um, getting the lighting right. All you need is to show different materials, some sort of reflection, so something that's shiny. So in this one here I can start to see a bit of a reflection is coming out here, that's reflection, and then the shadow. So once this is finished we've got shadow. So reflection, shadow and materials is all we're trying to actually achieve. As long as you've got a decent render that it's not um, that has not uh, is pixelated, then that that will be grand. We can save it, so we can stop it there, save it, and then that's us done.